Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. About three years ago, I built this quality barometer. I'll include a link above to the original videos that I did three years ago. Now, about a month ago, it started to play up and there are one or two faults that had occurred. Whilst repairing those, I thought I would update this barometer away from inches mercury through to pascals, which are more universal. The repair I did faulted these components. There was a switch that was at fault and a buzzer was going intermittent so I replaced that. I also modified the circuit very slightly that drives the uh, buzzer so hopefully it should prove to be more reliable. While we're here for those that don't know I thought I would introduce you to this barometer to see how it functions, how it works. Primarily subject to switch options you have a direct barometric Pascal feed to this analog meter. Sea level, which in millibars or hectopascals, is centered around, well, the sea level is 1013 millibars. I think there's a 0.25 at the end of that as well. So it's 1013.25 millibars or hectopascals. And don't worry about the H pascals, it's simply a hundred pascals. So that's centered around three milliamps on this meter. The reason why it's centered around three milliamps, this is a five milliamp meter, rather than two and a half milliamps, is that where we live in the UK, there is more lower barometric pressure, slightly, than there is higher. So I've offset the meter very slightly to accommodate the lowest of barometric pressures that are recorded and indeed the highest barometric pressures. Right, without getting too deeply into this, I'll just actually show you the switch function. So I'll be turning this. Let's try it. Let's try that. OK, there we are. So the first switch here is self-explanatory. It's um, the buzzer and the buzzer is either, because it can be irritating after a while, the buzzer is either off or on. The buzzer sounds every time the LED gauge that tells you whether the barometric pressure is higher or lower than the previous reading. So the LED will give you a trend and the update period if you make the trend update in a short period and as I said the buzzer will buzz every time the LED gauge is being updated but if you update over a short period of time of course there's not much in the way of deviation from the previous reading. There is a second switch here that gives a short update period of 10 seconds or indeed a long period of time before it updates which represents 10 minutes. So you've got a choice here between 10 seconds or 10 minutes. And over 10 minutes of course the deviation can actually move quite away from the previous reading. I'll go into that in a second. The third switch here again is rather self-explanatory. It's the calibration for the meter. So it calibrates at two and a half milliamps, which is half FSD. Remember that the meter was five milliamps. It's calibrated at two and a half milliamps. And all that does is make sure that the meter reading is dead on accurate. The third switch here is a slightly more complex function, but I think it's easily explained. And that is in one position in what I've written here as direct. All that's happening is that the, the sensor, the barometric sensor, which incidentally is a 
BMP280 is directly fed to the meter and that's update many many times per second whereas the LED gauge is only updated once either 10 seconds or 10 minutes. The other option is interesting and that is that when you switch that in it measures the deviation between the current reading and the previous reading. So as I said back here on the second switch here, if you have a short update period for the LED gauge, although it tells you that there is a difference either higher, lower or the same, it doesn't tell you higher or lower the magnitude of that higher or lower. So what this switch position here does is actually give you a magnitude reading. And bear in mind that the general feeling towards barometric pressure is that the higher the pressure, the more finer the weather, the more stable the weather. The lower the pressure, the more windy, the more rain, etc. Although that is a very simple explanation. In fact, as we all know, weather conditions are immensely complex and um, there are many books written on this subject, so it's not quite as easy as that. But in principle, the LED gauge just tells you whether the barometric pressure is allegedly improving or allegedly getting worse. And obviously, the meter in this position will tell you the magnitude of that difference. Now what I'll do is just briefly open it up and guide you through the um, contents. This looks a little bit like a, um, a Christmas tree. It's so lit up, isn't it, internally? By the way, if you think that the enclosure looks like a takeaway box, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what it is. I find them very easy to work and they're freely available, aren't they? For certain applications, for certain uses, they work quite well. Back to the well lit up internals of this barometer. Every LED here actually matters. The microcontroller, um, got an LED on that, is an Atmega 168. It has a program memory of just 16K. The sensor which is underneath this container here is the BMP280 and I keep this on here just to keep the dust away from it and it's held into position, not glued, because bear in mind you've got to have barometric pressure differences um, reaching the sensor. It's not glued into place, it's held in the place by the cover. So when the cover clicks in, that, that little container is held against the um, PCB. The little pink LED that's um, breathing in and out, it has multiple purposes. Uh, one of them is that it blinks at high brightness when the LED gauge is updated, as you can see there. It breathes for another good reason, and that is that it shows that the, the microcontroller is actually running an algorithm. If there were any problems, that wouldn't breathe, and you would immediately know that there is something wrong. In three years that's never happened. It's, this is actually proved to be very reliable except for the switch and the buzzer. Uh, a little group of three green LEDs, well two of them, these two in front, are there because this circuit uses a 7805 and in fact actually I really wanted a 7809. As you can do with those chips, and I've got so many of the 7805s, that what I did was actually jack the zero volts up by using two LEDs in series. And the current through the LEDs is uh, not endangering the LEDs, it's actually quite low. But um, each LED it acts like a xenodote, it's, a, it's a, a band gap, isn't it? 
So each one is two volts, so you've got about four volts there, plus the five volts of the regulator gives you nine volts on the output. That's the reason why they're there. The other green LED over the back here supplies 3.3 volts from a five volt line to the BMP280 because that runs on 3.3 volts. What I did was again using a green LED as if you like a Zener diode dropping down the um, 5 volt rail down to 3.3 volts and of course the other LEDs here are the LED gauge which you can see moving around there. Inside here you've got a line fuse the power supply is 15 volts at I think about 10 or 12 milliamps quite low but I've got I think a 50 milliamp conventional glass 20 millimeter fuse in line just in case there's something goes wrong inside there and um, other than ancillary components that's more or less it there's a, a multi-turn adjustment here well that adjusts for the calibration of the meter here at 2.5 milliamps the led i was just speaking about um, the 5 volt the 7805 well in fact it really is the L version, which is a maximum current of 100 milliamps. Uh, it's not the 1 amp version. The library software for the BMP280, I found when I was updating this software a little bit, that the, most of the program memory was actually um, nearly full. And the reason being is that the Adafruit library software for this the latest versions of it have expanded so much it practically takes up all the program memory of the uh, Atmega 16A. You could use the 32 version but I had a number of these 16K Atmegas so I thought I would use that. So I use on this and I stick to using version 102. And that is the last version before Adafruit updated it to enormous size that practically consumes a whole of the program memory. Whilst an analog meter can show a value at a glance, it's very good at doing that. It's not very good if you wish to see finer details of a value. The analog meter I've straightened out on this drawing into a straight line. Each division, it's a 5 milliamp full scale deflection meter. Each major division represents 1 milliamp. And in the direct mode, this equates to each 1 milliamp represents 2000 pascals. Therefore, each subdivision, which is a half milliamp on the meter, each one of those, therefore represents 1000 pascals. In the centre here we have two sets of numbers, one green and one blue, with the third one being black. In blue, these represent sea level barometric pressure, of which the normal average barometric sea level represents here, which is 101325, and that is effectively a reference number. So moving on to the green, we have my barometric pressure when the sea level is of this barometric pressure. So the green is displaced by 100 metres. I'm 100 metres above sea level. So when sea level is 101.325, I'm actually at 100129. That is a difference, which is where the black numbers come in, that is a difference of 1196 pascals. Regarding this set of black numbers in the center here, you can see at our reference that the number, the difference between sea level and my home is 1196. All the numbers that are listed here, the 
blue and the green were all derived from an online barometric pressure calculator, a link to which I'll include in the description. When you look carefully at these different black numbers, you can see that through the range of barometric pressure that the UK is inflicted with, the, the numbers go from, what, um, 1125 pascals through to ranging through to 1243 pascals. The difference between each half milliamp on the meter looks, if you look at these numbers, they look to be about 12 pascals apart, and they are all 12 pascals apart from each other. This is probably because I live just 100 metres above sea level. I'm very close to sea level. But as, as the altitude increases, you will find that there is a divergence in these numbers and the proportionality, the linear effect of these numbers starts to diverge. This is indicative of a non-linear function. Atmospheric pressure changes in relation to the altitude. Within the Arduino script, there is a formula which compensates for this to produce an accurate value. There is a second physical property that causes an issue with barometric pressure, and that is temperature. As temperature increases, so the barometric pressure increases. Now moving on to the reason why I've centered the our reference, our sea level barometric pressure reference of 101325 pascals at three milliamps is because in the UK we have a record for a greater reduction in atmospheric pressure than we do for an increase barometric pressure. So I thought the most logical thing to do is move the centre away from, which would be the natural position of 2.5 milliamps, but to move it to 3 milliamps. And in that way, I can accommodate for most, except for the very, very rare extreme occasions, most UK barometric pressures. To practically demonstrate this meter running, if the barometric pressure were at sea level, let's say 99325 pascals, then the meter would read 2 milliamps, uh, which at my home barometric pressure 100 metres above sea level would therefore be 98153. That's equally true if the sea level pressure were now, say, uh, 103325, that would represent 4 milliamps, which would represent at my home 102106. Adding to this information, this drawing is not really complete because there are sub sub division markings between naught and 0.5 milliamp and rippled all the way through up until 5 milliamps. There are markings here. Each one represents 200 pascals. Well, that makes sense because half a milliamp represents 1,000 pascals. Divide that by five. Each one of those, therefore, would represent 200 pascals. And that gives us the facility to read quite finely, although it depends on your optics, your eyes, numbers between these values. The other option that is available to us on this barometer is DIFF, short for differential, and it's effectively a null meter. This is the facility where you measure the magnitude between the previous LED update and the current LED update. This needs to be sensitive. It needs to be able to display easily 
five pascals, ten pascals, or even one pascal. So it is centered around two and a half milliamps here. If there is, um, let's say, a five pascal rise in barometric pressure between the current and the previous update, if it's a plus five pascal, it would be at this point here, which is three milliamps, because it's a plus. If it's a minus five pascals, it would be here. If it's a minus 10 pascals, it would be here at one and a half milliamps. And if it's at a plus 10 pascals, it would be here. The 10 second update timing really only moves the meter a few, a handful of pascals, because not much change has occurred within 10 seconds. And that sort of hovers around here. When you choose a 10 minute timing interval, it can actually move quite far. This needle can move quite far either side of this meter. And sometimes on rare occasions, it can hit five milliamps or conversely hit zero milliamps. The calibration of the diff mode is um, five pascals per half a milliamp. So each half a milliamp along here has a difference between them of five pascals. From here to here would be 10 pascals. From here to here would be 20 pascals. Having said all that, let's go through the note at the top here. Let's start off at the top and go anti-clockwise. At the top here, in the basic barometer mode, it is uniquely centered around three milliamps. Well, that's in the direct mode and it's centered at three milliamps. That's what it's telling you there. On note one, it's saying the fine meter marks not shown are a measure of 200 pascals between each mark. OK, that's in the direct mode and there are 200 pascals for each <laughs> sub sub division mark here. A thousand pascals per half a milliamp divided by five. The next note here, the difference between sea level and my home at 100 metres above pascals. Well, we've described that. That's the numbers through the middle here in black. And they change as the pressure goes up. Pressure goes down according to a nonlinear logarithmic scale. The next uh, R. This little note here, this um, meter is also used for calibration and it's the third switch from the left hand side. If you switch that on at any time, the meter will automatically go to this point here, which is 2.5 milliamps. You can adjust the little potentiometer within the barometer to align the meter to exactly two and a half uh, milliamps. It's a calibration, isn't it? Uh, the next note at the bottom, bottom here is um, uh, the two and a half milliamp mark is also used for centering the compare with prior reading mode option. Well, that's the diff mode option, as we've just discussed, and that centers around two and a half milliamps as well, whereas the direct centers itself around three milliamps which is the sea level 101325. Note two, in the compare with prior reading mode, each half a milliamp represents five pascals. Well, we just discussed that. So in the diff mode, the difference between these blue numbers here is always five pascals. Uh, the final reading here. Well, before I reach that, let's just do this a little bit here. In the green note here, it's got my home altitude barometric pressure in pascals at 15 degrees C. And that is the measure um, of the barometric pressure at my home altitude level of 100 metres. In the blue here, we've got sea level barometric pressure in pascals. And um, that's that. Now, finally, let's go through to note three. And it basically just says that this meter is actually used for three things. 
a basic barometer, a calibration, which is the two and a half milliamps, and the compare with prior reading magnitude option, which is the diff mode. I would just like to add that the differential mode is almost identical with the in a normal mercury type barometer with the rise and fall indication. I produced this circuit diagram back in, well, 2019 for my barometer and you can see that the modification I made is very obvious. But I thought I would just go through this diagram quickly for the sake of um, interest. Top left hand corner we have the fuse, reverse protection here of the diode, the 78L05 jacked up with the two green LEDs. The resistor here takes a little bit of power heat away from the 78L05. You have the main Arduino chip here which is the Pro Mini at Mega 1685 volt 16 megabyte chip and you've got the four switches at the top here. We have here a little circuit that I was developing that automatically adjusted the mathematics of the software to allow for variations in ancillary to the Pro Mini devices. Along the bottom here you have the LED gauge display, the green, white and blue LEDs that is falling equal to and rising. Here you have the output to the meter, primarily a, a low pass filter and adjustment resistors to calibrate the meter itself. The next bit up, of course, is the pink LED, which uh, breathes in and out. And then finally, the BMP280 with the um, I2C interface. There's the dropper green LED up here, taking 5 volts down to 3.3 volts DC. And then finally, you've got the drive to the 5 volt beeper. And this is the... Oh no, I've forgotten the switches, and these are the four switches here. All the switches as stated here are still still correct, as in the diagram here, except the title, I think, of the fourth switch on the right-hand side, which I've relabeled as direct and diff, not normal barometer <laughs> stroke null. So I've changed the um, wording of that. Going back to the modification that I made, R7, which, I, which was an 82 ohm resistor, reduced the voltage of 9 volts down to the 5 volt beeper. Over a period of time, I don't know whether it's because the beeper was cheap or whether the technique of using a resistive dropper to make this within its correct operating voltage uh, had failed or what but what I've done now is replace that resistor with a Zener diode this is a 1 watt Zener diode a 3.9 uh, Zener voltage and I've literally replaced R7 with that Zener diode with the um, cathode to the plus 9 volts DC I thought it was about time I actually demonstrated the unit and its accuracy. I've got the powers off at the moment and I've got the switches set to um, buzzer on um, update 10 minutes, calibration off and direct. That means the BNP280 is feeding directly the meter as soon as the power goes on. When I plug the unit in you will hear at 10 second intervals even though I've set the timing to 10 minutes pip every 10 seconds three times. This is to purge the memory, get the memory in the right condition and allow for things to power up and settle down but the reading will be immediate and direct on the meter set in the mode of direct. So let me plug this in now.
you will hear it pip in a second and you can see that the meter is immediately reading here. We we'll talk about sea level bearing in mind that I'm only a hundred meters above sea level so I'll just consider the sea level barometric pressure and at the moment we have a barometric reading of 3.65 on the needle there milliamps well three we know as 1013 which is the normal average barometric pressure and I've got it uh, at three milliamps so the next subdivision would be 1023 each sub sub division those small lines it's around um, one and a half well each each sub subdivision is 200 so half of that would be 100 so we're looking at 300 above 2023 which comes out at 1026 if you wanted to translate it to exactly where I'm standing now in my home there is a 1200 pascal difference between sea level and where I live now as you gathered it's settled down the three pips have gone and you can see that the green rising and falling LED gauge has is on we will have to wait for 10 minutes for this to be updated but you can see on the basis of this that we've got a, a falling barometric pressure let's move away from 10 minutes let's go to a, an update of 10 seconds so move this over to there and you will hear every 10 seconds the beeper beep to indicate that the LED is being refreshed. And again, there is a falling, I don't know whether you heard that beep, but there is a falling barometric pressure. And now, after 10 seconds, there is a rising barometric pressure. So every 10 seconds, you probably gathered, can actually be barometric high barometric low it can vary now if i want to see the magnitude of that i go to the the mode switch here which is uh, direct or differential and switch it to differential in the differential mode please bearing in mind that the center the zero is now 2.5 milliamps any deviation will be around that 2.5 milliamps and you can see that the needle is hardly moving look it's still on zero and that's correct because you've got a white and a blue led which indicates it was the same as a previous reading but this has gone now falling and we're looking at each sub subdivision representing one pascal so you had a one negative pascal then you've now got three two and a half pascals rise you've now gone rise again after 10 seconds let's put the um, beeper back on so we can hear this all right okay it's been updated again again it's positive and you've only got a one pascal shift there this is this is what 10 seconds does it doesn't move the barometric uh, pressure difference greatly on the meter you're dealing with a handful of pascals on um, the differential mode we've got here four so that was four pascals negative it's actually quite quite sensitive a couple of pascals rise but of course the gauge just tells you whether it's rising or falling or equal to the last reading. It doesn't tell you the magnitude of that reading. That was a slightly higher positive reading at four pascals. Uh, and that was a larger reading, wasn't it? You're down to minus six pascals falling. Couple of pascals falling green. One pascal <laughs> rising. Now if I were to switch the update or refresh period to instead of 10 seconds to 
10 minutes we would have to wait 10 minutes before it updates and uh, i don't think you hang around in fact i can describe this can't i if in, in the 10 minute update option you will find that the needle actually moves quite considerably either side because obviously after 10 minutes the barometric pressure has either risen or fallen a fair amount although we're looking at small numbers here the resolution is very good a fair amount on the meter it can never exceed zero it can never exceed five milliamps because there are actually clamps software clamps to prevent that from happening but i hope that um, has explained things a little clearer just for confirmation what i've got here is my local reference it is a marina barometric pressure obviously it's at sea level and the time that i i was doing the video and we had the results of my meter reading 1026 that was approximately one o'clock in the afternoon and you can see here midday according to this marine website that the sea level barometric pressure was 1026 and that's in millibars as far as this marina is concerned which is a direct equivalence to hectopascals so you can see that uh, my barometer is actually quite accurate this is beamer signing out for now